It is Friday, January 15, 2021. Welcome to the Early Edge in our UFC special as we start to expand the brand and expand all the different shows we put under our umbrella. And the UFC is back in action after a hiatus over the new year, and they head back to Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. And so I have found one of the best MMA handicappers in the business. And every week that they have a big fight, we're going to do one of these special shows. Kyle Marley, you can follow him at Big Marley 3 on Twitter. And if Betters have been following you the last 23 months. And here at the show, we're about the long play. A $100 better with you, Kyle, would have won over $22,000. You love the sport. You love better sport. Before we get into the picks, what do you think is the biggest thing that people who want to get into MMA betting need to understand? Um, so what we're doing here on MMA betting, we're not just picking fights. Uh, it's easy to say, I think, John Jones is going to win this fight, but we're working with betting lines where these betting lines are implied probability. So you might think John Jones wins a fight 60% of the time, but if his betting line is minus 300, that indicates that he should be winning 75% of the time. Therefore, there is no value on that play anymore. So you have to think about how often you think a fighter is going to win each matchup, you know, a hundred plus times, a thousand plus times, uh, because like you mentioned, it is a long-term game. We're not, we're not, trying to predict the outcome necessarily for every single fight. Uh, but what I, I love about MMA is that you're, you're betting on one person to do their job, to do what you have seen them do on film leading up to that fight. Whereas NBA or NFL, you're, you're relying on a whole team of players to show up that day, work together uh, and do what their coach tells them to do. And, and that's just, that's too hard for me to predict personally. So I'm just better at, uh, trying to decide who's going to win a fight and how often they're going to win that fight. And that's, that's why I love betting on MMA. That's why we put you on your own show here at the early edge. <laughs> now it should be clear that at the sports line app and sportsline.com, uh, it is Kyle's job to pick the winners of all the fights. But as he said, there's a difference between picking winners of the fights and actually the bets that he's going to make. So that's why you want to watch this show to see what bets he's making and also uh, how he's leaning certain ways on different things. So let's jump right in. Uh, and first, I want to do a, a preliminary parlay play uh, on the, the preliminary card. And there's six fights uh, starting at noon Eastern time. What do you like on the prelim card? and What are you putting together? So on the prelims, the first fight of the night, we have Austin Lingo versus Jacob Kilburn. And Lingo, he's actually my favorite pick on the card, just outright. I think he's a level above Kilburn. I really don't think Kilburn's ready for the UFC yet. Uh, he definitely has power in his hands, and, and if he lands the right shot, he can knock Lingo out. Uh, I just I think Lingo is more likely to land that big shot, and he has four finishes in 35 seconds or less on his record. He's the better boxer. He's going to be the one pushing forward, kind of bullying Kilburn here, uh, and, and he swings with power. So I think the only way Kilburn wins that fight is going to be a knockout, and I would have lined Lingo closer to – 75%, which is minus 300, and we're getting him around minus 220, minus 240. So I like him as a money line play, but I, I don't love laying that kind of chalk on, you know, these lower level fighters. So what I would be doing is parlaying him with a with a prop in a different fight in the Phil Hawes versus Imavov fight. I, I don't think that fight's going to go to decision. Phil Hawes has never even been to the third round in one of his fights. Uh, he, he's a beast. I mean, you just look at him, you can see that he can knock out anybody with the right shot. And he's an elite wrestler as well. It's just the issue is if he doesn't get that finish in the first round or if he does wrestle and just dominates his opponent, he might not have the gas tank in rounds two or rounds three. And Imovov can definitely finish him in either of those rounds. So I just don't we see uh, I don't think we see the judges on that one. So just parlay those two together. Get yourself some plus money on that. And that's probably my favorite prelim play. Uh, but the, the odds on Hawes has come down a bit. He opened around minus 185 getting closer to even. So if you want a little extra action, I don't hate his uh, money line or inside the distance either. And that's the key in MMA betting. If you see a, a couple of things that are really high odds that you can parlay them together, and that's how you bring the odds down if you really like a couple of different fights, just like Kyle did right there. Okay, next fight on the card for us. Let's go on to the main card. Uh, both undefeated fighters in the middleweight division, Fedorovic and Soriano. How do you see this one playing out? So I'm, I'm really excited for this one. I think these guys are both high-paced guys who can – Definitely get a knockout with the right punch, either one of them. I do think uh, Todorovic is probably the better all-around fighter. He's going to have the better gas tank. But from what I've seen, he kind of leaves himself open a little bit too much. He keeps his hands low, his chin's a little bit high. 
and he throws with these looping punches where I just don't think that's a good recipe against a guy like Soriano who is really going for that kill every minute he's in there. And I think he's going to end up knocking out Todorovic. I don't know that he can go three rounds and win a decision here, so I would just take the TKO prop because I think if he wins, it's most likely going to be TKO, and you get a much better number at that around two plus 275. So Todorovic, uh, I mean, sorry, sorry, Soriano plus 275 by TKO. Stay away from the money line in my opinion. All right, very good. Let's move on to the next one on the board, the co-main event. This is Carlos Condit, Matt Brown. Condit coming in at minus 170, that according to our good friends at William Hill. Uh, Matt Brown comes back at plus 145. These are two veterans in the welterweight division. They've been through the wars. How do you see this one playing out? Yeah, this would have been an awesome fight like seven years ago. We've been waiting for it for that long, I feel like. Uh, But now we're getting them both at the end of their careers. And I just think... It's more so the end of Matt Brown's career. He's 40 years old now. He's, he's showing that his durability is not really there anymore. And I don't even know that he has a gas tank to go a full hard 15 minutes, especially against a guy like Conde who can push a pace, go at a high, high level and put out some good output. Um, so the way I see this going down is the first round is probably the most competitive round. And maybe Matt Brown looks to wrestle in that round because Conde really has no takedown defense. So I think Brown could get on top, have some good success. But if he does that, I, I think he's going to slow down. And Condit is going to come after him in rounds two or rounds three and get a finish there. Condit has finished 28 of his 31 wins. And Brown hasn't been to a decision since 2015. Uh, and I do like Condit a good bit in this match. So my favorite play would be Condit inside the distance. Uh, shop around. There's different lines all, all through the industry. So you can get some really good lines on that right now. And then what I did, I sprinkled in. Um, Condit by submission at plus 1,500. Uh, a little sprinkle on that, a, a sprinkle on Condit by TKO in round two at plus 1,000, and then Condit by TKO in round three at plus 1,400. So as long as he doesn't get the knockout in the first round, uh, I'm pretty set with those big props right there, but I also have the inside the distance to cover it. So um, that's my favorite fight on the card to target prop-wise, and I hope it's close to as good as it would have been seven years ago. Uh, and when, for those of you that are brand new to the sport of MMA betting, when he says sprinkle, he means uh, a much smaller bet or a percentage of what your normal bet would be, uh, not the full size of what your bet that you're comfortable with making. All right, finally, uh, before we get to the main event, I got to tell people that uh, we are growing the Early Edge brand powered by Sportsline. And I can tell you, if you sign up right now for an account, Using the promo code EDGE, you get 30 days for free. You get all of Kyle Marley's MMA picks, all of our picks from our our great cappers at the NBA, Major League Baseball, hockey, all of it, and our sports simulations. Use the promo code EDGE. Sign up today and get all those picks. All right, we've got 90 seconds left. Max Holloway, Calvin Cater, they're the main event. Holloway, the favorite, minus 160. Cater coming back at plus 135. Give me what you got in the main event. I can't wait for this fight. We've been away from MMA for three weeks. This is a great main event to come back to because it's going to be a high-paced striking battle where I don't think either one of these guys is going to want to go out there and look for takedowns. Uh, So I think we're going to see a 25-minute brawl, and I I think Holloway is going to win here on output. I don't see him finishing Cater, and I think Cater is the one that's more likely to actually get a knockout here. Holloway's taken a ton of punishment lately, but he's never been knocked out yet. Cater could be the guy to do it. So I wouldn't really want to lay the juice on Holloway at minus 160. Take him by the decision prop. You get a little bit of plus money there. That's the way I would do it. And and hopefully this is an amazing fight that people are chasing for that fight of the year award all all year long. And it's a great way to start. uh, You have back in the main event, and then we're heading up uh, for the big Conor McGregor fight next Saturday. Okay, uh, the clock is winding down. So real quickly, grab your paper. Grab your pencil. Here is the recap of all of Kyle's picks. We start with the prelim parlay. Uh, take uh, Lingo over Kilborn and parlay that up with Haas and Imavov not going the distance to bring those uh, numbers down. Then on the main card, he loves Soriano by TKO. You can get that at plus 275 at William Hill. Then in the co-main event, sprinkling a little bit on everything Carlos Condon. The bet he likes the most inside the distance. Then a little bit on a submission at plus 1,500. Round two TKO at plus 1,000. And a TKO in round three plus 1,400. Clearly, all three of these wouldn't hit. But at the odds that they're at, you would make money if one of them comes into play. And then in the main event, he likes Max Holloway by decision. Brings that minus 160 number down to plus 125 to get that plus money. All right. You've got your marching orders. Let's take all these picks straight 
to the pay window. For the big man, Kyle Marley, I am the coach. Remember, this is the only place, MMA style, for your daily early edge.